Hey guys, it's Lano here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about immersion. In case you guys didn't notice, my YouTube channel is following the refold method and we're adding in a bit of Ajax sauce and mixing it all together. Now, for those who haven't watched my refold video, I'll put it somewhere here on the screen for you to click and go watch that first and then come back and watch this video. Now, right now we're currently on stage one of the refold method, lay the foundation. More specifically, stage one, part A, setting up the tools and habits. Now, what are the tools? That is Anki. And I've already made two videos, which are my two last videos, on how to set up Anki, how to make your account, how to use Anki and so on. So that's ticked off the list. Now, the next part of setting up tools and habits is actually the habits, which is immersion. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. In particular, in today's video, we're going to be talking about what is immersion, the different types of immersion, why immersion is important and how you can go about your immersion no matter how busy you are in your day-to-day -day life. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get straight into the video. So what is immersion? Immersion is surrounding yourself in your target language. Here on my channel, we're learning Japanese, so it's simply surrounding yourself in the Japanese language. Now, it does not mean simply just turn everything Japanese and that's it. It means living the Japanese language. It means bringing the country Japan and bringing it to where you are. And there's many ways that you can go about that and I'm gonna teach you about that in this video. Types of immersion. There are two types of immersion. There's active immersion and there's passive immersion. I have already spoken about this in the refold video, but I'm gonna go into a bit more detail in this video. As mentioned in my refold video, active immersion is simply giving your full undivided attention to Japanese. This can be through you reading a Japanese manga, reading a Japanese novel, or you literally sitting down and watching anime, Japanese anime, or a Japanese TV show. Passive immersion, on the other hand, is giving your divided attention to Japanese. Now, in terms of passive immersion, you can see this more as a spectrum, whereas the amount of attention given to Japanese varies. For example, if you're walking down the street and walking your dog while listening to Japanese in your headphones, you're probably giving more attention to Japanese than if you are writing your dissertation while Japanese anime is running in the background. You're still giving Japanese some attention in the latter, however, the amount of attention is very minuscule because you're actually doing a dissertation which is in English or in your native language and it requires a lot of focus. Obviously, active immersion gives you greater gains and faster progress because you're giving your full undivided attention to Japanese and your brain is actively working to decipher the meaning and understanding of what you're actually watching. However, this does not mean passive immersion is completely useless. Passive immersion is important because during those breaks that you take away from your main task, it allows you to fill in those gaps with Japanese and ensure that you're always improving and making progress in your language journey. For example, if you're doing your dissertation and you're writing and there's Japanese anime running in the background that you're not paying much attention to, however, but for a second you decide that you wanna to go to the toilet, while you're going to the toilet, your brain's attention is gonna to switch to that anime running in the background and then it will allow you to still make progress in your Japanese. So why is immersion important? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Immersion is important because it's the only way you're gonna be able to acquire a language and then be able to speak it. Think of it this way. With any function, you always have input first and then you can output. It's never output then input. And that's why I'm not an advocate for people trying to speak Japanese very early in their journey because they just end up butchering the language, getting poor quality output and building very bad habits. Here's another way to think of it. You cannot have quality output unless you put in quality, quality input and a large quantity of it as well. Here's an example. You're making bread. What are the ingredients for bread? You need some water, salt, oil, flour. And you need good quality. You need good quality of each one of these ingredients if you want to make good quality bread. On top of that, you also need to make sure you have the right amount of each of these ingredients and you also need to make sure that you give the bread time in the oven to cook so that you're able to get the best quality bread that you can make. Now, if you don't put in the right amount of ingredients or the right quality, or you don't give the bread enough time in the oven, you're gonna end up with very trash, ugly, terrible tasting 
bread. Now, let's bring it back to Japanese. Oh, please tell me I hit the record button. Oh. Now, let's bring it back to Japanese. In order for you to be able to speak fluent, good quality Japanese, you need to give yourself good quality input. Ingredients, what are these ingredients? This is reading and listening. You also need to make sure that the things that you're reading and listening to is high quality. Now, what do I mean by quality? High quality, I mean the things that you're reading and listening to have to be made by natives for natives. Again, what do I mean by that? It means that you need to be watching and listening to things that are made by Japanese people for Japanese people. Low quality stuff is things made by foreigners for foreigners or made by Japanese people for foreigners. Why is stuff made by foreigners for foreigners terrible? Because who are they? They're foreigners. What do they know about Japanese? And they're all going to be trying to teach you with English in their mind. And why is stuff made by natives for foreigners bad as well? Because natives, what do they know about learning Japanese? A Japanese person does not know how to learn Japanese. They simply just lived in Japan and grew up with the language and acquired the language. So they don't know anything about learning Japanese. The best way you can learn Japanese is finding a foreigner who learned Japanese to fluency and ask them how they did that. And that's why this channel is founded off of Katsumoto and Mac, because these are two people who learn the Japanese language to fluency as foreigners. Think of it this way. Let's take the example of a baby, more specifically a Japanese baby, but this can be applied to any type of baby from any country. A Japanese baby goes through a silent period when, from the time they're born until they start actually speaking. That silent period, they do not talk. Why? Well, number one, because they can't talk. But number two, because they're busy immersing themselves in the Japanese language. They are inputting, inputting and inputting. And it's only until after 12 months that they're able to just say their first words. Simple words like hello and bye, konnichiwa, sayonara, matane, all these things. And it's only after 18 months that the baby is actually able to make simple sentences. Now, I am not saying that's going to take you 12 to 18 months for you to just be able to say simple things like hello, bye, and simple sentences like watashi no namae wa rai no desu and so on. The good thing for you is that you are not a baby. You are a full grown adult who already knows what concepts and ideas are, which means you can pick up things much quicker. The reason why it takes so much time for a baby to just pick up simple words and sentences is because their brain is starting from a blank slate, from nothing. However, for you, you already have your first native language and you can use that to speed up the progress. For example, if I told you that this is tamago, in Japanese like you already know what this is in the first place you already know in English this is an egg and you already have an idea and what an egg is that it's a food that it's you can eat it and so on and it comes from chickens you already have all these ideas associated with what this is whereas for a baby even if you told a baby this is tamago or an English baby that this is an egg they're gonna be like what the hell is an egg what is this thing what is this they have no idea what it is on top of that, if I told you that the way to say hello in Japanese is konnichiwa, you're, it's, you're learning that in two seconds, straight up. Whereas a Japanese baby has to listen to the word konnichiwa said multiple, multiple times before they even get an idea of how it's used and what it means. And because of this, just imagine how much progress you can make if you go through a silent period of 12 to 18 months where you just immerse yourself in a Japanese language without speaking. Think about it, man, think about it. Now it's time for the part of the video I know you've been waiting for, how to immerse. Let's start with active immersion. Active immersion is pretty easy. I know 90% of you are takus and weeaboo, so just keep doing what you do best. Watch tons of anime and Japanese TV shows, and that's about it. You can continue watching it on your illegal anime websites and Netflix. The only difference this time is that you have two options. You can either remove the English subtitles and replace them with Japanese subtitles or just remove the subtitles as a whole and just watch them raw. Raw Japanese anime. 
I'm pretty sure I don't really need to teach you much about how to actively immerse unless you guys don't have Netflix or you literally don't know any websites where you can watch anime for free. If that's the case, I'm gonna link one website below, which is pretty good in the description. And there you can watch anime with English subtitles, with Japanese subtitles, and you can remove all the subtitles. So yeah, you can thank me later. Now we can go into passive immersion. How do we do passive immersion? I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, hey guys, we've now switched to my phone, okay? So this is, I'm gonna show you guys how to passively immerse. The things you're gonna need, you're gonna need um, a phone, preferably an iPhone. I'm not too sure about Android users, but I think an Android phone would also work. Um, you're gonna need a pair of headphones as well. You've got your pair of headphones, yeah? Okay, what are the two main ingredients? And on that phone of yours, you wanna make sure you have these three apps. You wanna have the Netflix, podcast, and the Spotify app. I just wanna make sure you have your Bible. Read your Bible, guys. Now, I'm gonna start off with Netflix. When it comes to Netflix, you're gonna need, okay, let's open up Netflix. You're gonna make sure you have two accounts, not two accounts, but two profiles. One called passive, one called active. Active, your active account is your account where you watch things actively with your undivided attention, where you follow the progress, make sure you're keeping track of your episodes and whatever you're actually interested in watching. Your passive account is the account where you're gonna be passively listening and these, this is gonna have shows that you've already actively watched and completed. Basically, they're going to be shows that you're watching again, but you, you're now listening to it and watching it passively. Does that make sense? Now, my active account is all, it's gonna have all my shows that I'm currently watching now. It won't show right now because I have a, I have a VPN which has Japanese Netflix and most of the shows I watch are on Japanese Netflix, but um. There's a few, it just shows here the things that I'm currently watching. So Demon Slayer, um, Teasing Master, Tadaki-san. Uh, I've already watched Toradora, that's why it says season one, episode one, but Violet Evergarden and so on. Those are things I'm actively watching now and a few others, but it's not showing. Then if you go to my, my passive account, it will have the shows that I've already watched, which is Psyche K, I love that show. I've watched it so many times, Terrace House, Another thing you can watch are things that you know you'll never actively watch because they look boring. So these shows here, like Forest Piano in here, these are all shows that I'm, I've never actually actively watched, but I know they're Japanese and they will help me. Oh no, My Hero Academy is good. But anyway, yeah, now to passively immerse with Netflix, what you can do on iPhone, I'm not sure about Android, is that you can click on the show you want to watch. And then you can then lock your phone. And then you can see it's here. And then what you can then do is click play. <laughs> and now it will play while your phone's locked. And obviously what you can then do is plug in your headphones, put your phone in your pocket and just start listening to whatever shows you want. Um, while walking around and doing other stuff and so on. So that's how you can passively immerse with Netflix. Um, I live in a, for, at least from what I've seen around me, a lot of people have unlimited data. So watching Netflix in your pocket while walking outside shouldn't be much of a problem. But if you somehow have limited data, um, I think Netflix allows you to download shows so you can watch them offline, see downloads. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So that's why I use, that's how I use Netflix to passively immerse. Next, we have the pod, the iPhone podcast app. Um, I listen to like uh, news, news podcasts. I find them very interesting, see what's going on in Japan and their news and so on. But this is more advanced stuff. Um, stuff for beginners I'd recommend you guys listen to is this. This is a very big recommendation. It's called Learn Japanese from Small Talk. Um, where is my library? This is something I started off with and um, they're really good. What they do is that they speak Japanese very, they still speak Japanese normally, but it's like a bit more simplified and it's just really good. 
and they tell you about their lives and their stories and their experience going abroad and all of that stuff just two girls chatting away and yeah man and at the end of the video they give you like an explanation of not they give you definitions of the different words that they know somehow they know what words you find you will find difficult and they'll explain them either during the podcast or at the end of the podcast so obviously this is self-explanatory you can just hit play and then lock your phone put in your headphones play walk around and so on and the last app i use for passively immersing is obviously if you've ha you've done enough of this stuff and you just feel like chilling this is not the most useful listening to japanese music is not very useful in terms of improving your japanese but it just gives you vibes and whatever so yeah i have japanese playlists i'm gonna link them in the bio so you can enjoy all my amazing japanese music and my epic taste in japanese music so yeah and obviously it's, again it's a self-explanatory and then you just put in your headphones and so on but that does it for today's video however stop right there yeah you do not move i have homework for you go in the description there's a section called homework your homework is to watch the video on stephen Krashen about comprehensible input watch that video then cut once you've watched that video you'll have a greater understanding of the importance of immersion and input and um yeah man this is a very good informational video and it'll give you motivation and confidence that you know that everything i'm teaching you is not a bunch it's not a bunch of baloney or conspiracy and it's actually facts so um, yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful if you liked it share it with your friends subscribe put on notifications and i love you guys man and the next video stay tuned for the next video because the next video is now going to move on to stage one part b which is learning the building blocks and which is also what learning kanji i'm gonna show you how to learn kanji which all of you have been bugging me for so yeah look forward to that i'll see you guys next time ja matane